Uh, greetings everyone. I'll be delivering a talk on how to break the barriers to think tanks in Afghanistan. A famous comedian George Carlin once said, government don't want well-informed, well-educated people capable of critical thinking that's against government's interests. Afghanistan is changing fast. It needs fresh voices, fresh blood, fresh ideas to eliminate the old systems and break the barriers. How can we get a group of talented professionals, academia, Afghanistan-based researchers bound by a shared interest in supporting uh, accountable, transparent, effective development in all spheres as an institute in Afghanistan? How can we create a space for knowledge sharing and mutual learning around the role and importance of effective policy and policy impact, development of results and practical solutions, contributing findings of research and scholars to Afghan government, NGOs, private sector for the betterment of Afghanistan, contribute and facilitate alliance and networking among Afghans academia in Afghanistan and beyond and teasing out ideas that could be jointly promoted at national and global levels. Strengthen voices in Afghanistan on development challenges by creating the platform to offer actual researchers that have no political influence on the results. I would like to give an example of how far an idea can go. Uh, an MBA, Roy Raymond, wanted to buy his wife some lingerie, but he was too embarrassed to buy it in a department store. He comes up with an idea of a high-end place that doesn't make you feel shy. He gets 40,000 bank loan, borrows another 40,000 from his in-laws, and opens a store called Victoria's Secrets. Makes 500,000 his first year. He starts a catalog, opens three more stores, and in five years' time, he sells the company to Lexley Waxner for $4 million. Happy ending, right? Except two years, the company network jump more than $4 billion, and Ray Ramon jump off the Golden Gate Bridge and killed himself. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, before I propose my idea, I would like to tell you about this notion that John F. Kennedy in 1961, approximately 61 years ago, uttered the challenge to his uh, people. He said, uh, do not ask what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. Its simple meaning was to challenge the society to, com to improve the situation for good. But I think there's a bigger message here. And the message is that we have to work together as a society to improve our collective state. There's an extract from Denzel Washington when he says, I'm not going to ask what do you have. I'm saying how much you can give. Some of you have patience. Some of you have love. Some of you have the long gift of suffering. Some of you have patience. And most important of all, some of you have got time. Um, I would like to ask you, guess how many think tanks there are in Afghanistan and how many there are across the world? Would you believe Ministry of Justice don't even have the word think tank or otaq e fikr as it's called in Afghani language in the constitution, in Ministry of Justice, in the official Gazette laws? Hence, we need to break the barriers and envisage the world and work on creating a think tank. In the 1920s, there were a handful of think tanks. In the 1950s, there were over 100, all mainly cluttered in Western cities. Now, there are over 7,800 think tanks all across the world. So why have we seen a think tank boom? There are many reasons for it. First, there are twice as many democratic countries that there were 35 years ago. Uh, creating a demand for good policy research, need catered by think tanks. Secondly, the increasing intricacy of problems facing societies, including those related to the need for environmental safeguarding and sustainability. 
Thirdly, the availability of a growing unit of educated people, mainly with a global view, driven to bring change. And finally, the increased availability of funds from governments or private agencies to finance Think Tank. Yeah. Uh, Think Tank exists to mobilize expertise and ideas to influence the policy making process. The rationale for most think tanks to serve as an important catalyst for ideas and action. In a world facing many pressing problems that includes poverty, inequality, climate change, rapid urbanization, the spread of infectious diseases, armed conflict, international terrorism, organized crime, and the proliferation of nuclear weapons, good ideas that can be acted upon are essential at their best. Think Tank possess the ability to capture political imagination by brokering ideas, stimulating public debate, and offering creative practical solutions to tackle the world's most pressing problems. Getting on the government agenda requires perseverance, expertise, cultivating the right connections, and above all, good timing. Think Tank must take the advantage of opportunity when they arise and that is doing a set of things fully under one's control. In developing country context with relative recent democratization tradition, think tanks are increasingly taking on this function. For example, the Institute of Economic Affairs in Ghana played a pivotal role in organizing help strengthen democracy in a context of political instability by organizing workshops, voter education forms, and presidential and vice presidential debates. The Think Tank initiative, funded by Canada's International Development Research Center, CEDAR, and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the William and Flora Hewlett Foundation, UK Aid, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Netherlands, and Norwegian Agency for Development of Cooperation, is just one example of program that is helping to strengthen the role of think tanks in the global south to provoke public debate on important public policy issues of the day. Uh, think tanks have made these kind of contributions in the past. For example, Leo Paswalski, a Brookings Institute expert, was instrumental in helping to rebuild Europe after World War II by putting forward concrete recommendation that helped shape the Marshall Plan. The Carnage Endowment for International Peace led by its then president Raphael Lemkin, played a pivotal role in promoting the passage of UN Anti-Genocide Convention by the General Assembly of the United Nations in 1948. Spurred on the need to prevent another Holocaust in the midst of 2008 financial crisis, the CIGI proposed for innovation in the G8 system. They helped leaders to create a G20 leaders group. The development helped to establish G20, the premier for the Forum for International Economic Cooperation in Troubled Economic Times. Another example was a breakthrough spearheaded by a think tank was the idea of advanced market commitment for vaccine championed by a Center for Global Development Working Group. The result was a mechanism that provided guarantees to increase private investment in research and development for vaccine development for disease that primarily affected developing countries in 2005. The G7 finance ministers endorsed the idea and six donors committed $1.5 billion to the initiative. These ideas were often developed not in isolation but were part of an iterative process of discovery, learning and ad adaptation. Sometimes through failure, in each case, the timing proved critical. Successful think tanks keep their proposals at the ready. And when problem emerges to which their proposals can be the solution, they jump into action. Having good idea is not enough. Ideas do not derive policy changes themselves. They must be coupled with more conventional political forces. To be successful, think tanks need to have sufficient resources and persistence to continue cultivate an idea as they wait for the right moment to mobilize an alliance of supporters around. 
The key output of Think Tank is the publication of their research and policy work. At some time, most organize conferences, seminars, both as part of their research and research process, before publication and after publication to disseminate their work. They may also seek to hold private meetings with government, ministers, business people and volunteer organizations involved in the policy making process. Think tank directors and other senior staff members are often considered leading experts in their field and sometimes writes pieces of newspaper, political magazine and appear on news and current affair programs. Think tanks uses the internet and media to disseminate their findings and as a way of encouraging debate on issues in which they have an interest. Many have websites containing downloadable reports, information on seminars, virtual debating forums, and further links to useful websites. Thinking and makeup is nearly same. If used wisely, makeup changes the way you look and thinking changes your life for better. Yeah. Every year we change our clothes, upgrade our mobile phone, our car, electronics. But do we change our thoughts towards creative thinking and implementing those ideas we have in our mind? Ladies and gentlemen, there are over 5,000 unions in, in Afghanistan. And as per Ministry of Justice, no official think tank exists. Why should there be a think tank in Afghanistan? The simple answer is, as I mentioned, all the problems that could be resolved. Think tanks should have a criteria of all the educated masters and PhD uh, coming together from all over the country with the aim to help all aspects of Afghan life, reflect the innovative ideas to help shape a better Afghanistan. We need these talents and treasures who will be under one roof to help and influence policy makers and hopefully the general public can support them. As we are aware, Politicians are not lawyers, doctors, scientists, or mostly academics in their own field or many fields. Hence, think tank would support them and guide them with policies and concepts to help shape a better Afghanistan. They say life is like an ice cream. Enjoy it while it melts. I say life is like a candle. You should bring light to others before it melts. The ideology behind the ice cream is for selfish enjoyment and candle is selfish contribution and services to enlighten others before it melts. Similarly, working as a think tank, helping Afghans with their policies, concepts and ideas. What would be the action, uh, action points from today's speech? We should start our think tank small and eventually it will grow over the course of years. Elon Musk, CEO of Tesla once said, you can't finish a 10 year project in two years. Accept it and you'll be far ahead in life if you're going to finish it in six months. If we manage to get 25 people in the first year, it's also a success. Let's not forget Coca-Cola sold 25 bottles in the first year. Similarly, an example would be a communist party of China. 100 years ago, it only had 50 party members. Nowadays, the number is 95.2 million people members. I believe that if we manage to get 50 top educated people in think tank, you can change the whole policy and perspective of Afghanistan. Uh, to conclude, there are more than 7,800 think tanks around the world, more than thousands in America, thousands in China, and a lot in India. Afghanistan needs to have a strong think tank. We're not competing with another country. It's just the countries have gone far ahead compared to Afghanistan. This think tank will help give Afghanistan a fresh face, a fresh identity, a fresh group of talented, educated people who can serve the country to the best of their ability. Thank you very much.